All right, look at that. This is the end product that we're going for in this lesson. So it's Ryan the Tone Geek here, and today we're going to be going over in Autodesk Inventor 2018 um, how to construct sheet metal um, so you can build your own chassis or continue building your own chassis. Uh, series, the first part was about how to basically do the layout in AutoCAD, and I'll just fire up AutoCAD here. Um, so we have our layout, and then this is going to take that layout and bring it into a 3D environment. And that's what we see here in Autodesk Inventor. So without further ado, um, some of the tools you're going to need in this is basically the, an export of your drawing in AutoCAD. So you're going to go to AutoCAD and then um, export a DWG. And that DWG is a open standard for um, drawings and such. So it's more or less an XYZ plane um, sort of file versus a proprietary AutoCAD file. So we're going to export that, save it locally, and then you have basically that layout ready. Now we're not going to just jump right into that. Um, first there's a little setup. So I'm going to close the final product and then we're going to start a new project. So I'm going to go to start new and then you see a sheet metal. Um, now the template for the sheet metal based on the country that you're in and based on the thickness of the metal you want to use um, it's going to dictate kind of uh, physical parameters around this 3D model. Um, meaning that if in Europe a uh, common uh, sheet metal thickness is two millimeters and if you're in the United States a common thickness for uh, sheet metal is going to be 0 0.08 mil, um, inches or uh, 1 8 inch thickness which is 0.125 so you'll notice here that there is a template um, see users and basically here's the template file uh, I have that open here so we're going to open that up at the moment. Um, I'm going to create a new one. So let's open. Come on. Oop, looks like something's yelling at me. OK. Hopefully I didn't open it too many times. And then don't do any modeling yet in here. We're going to go up to Sheet Metal Defaults. And you'll notice that I have a couple different selections. These are ones that I've created in the past, but I want to create a new one so I'm going to just kind of edit an existing um, file and then I'm going to click on one that I sort of know. I th believe that the 0.09 came f by default or maybe even default came from default. Um, and I'm going to hit new and then we're just going to call this uh, for example 0.080 and this is where we're going to do some editing. So the thickness of the metal is 0 0.080 and that's more or less uh, all that we're going to do in here. All the bending radius and stuff is going to be figured out and defaulted for you. Um, the K factor basically and here's some uh, bending. So we're just going to take right click here and active. So we're going to make that the active default. Save and close. Uh, I think that's already applied because we made it an active default. And now we're going to close the sheet metal.ipt. Do we want to make changes? Yes. Okay, now the next thing we do is we want to start a new project. So go up here and then new sheet metal.ipt create. So that's going to take the defaults of the sheet metal.ipt uh, IPT, and use that as our parameters for sheet metal in this. So maybe it's going a little slow. Um, because I'm recording all this. But first thing first is we're going to create a sketch. And that sketch opens up this XYZ plane. Um, we want to make for this one is a, ooh, we want the top to be this. So I'm going to do the XZ plane. Um, at this point, we can start seeing how things are going to be based on clicking this little cube over here which is changing the camera angle. Uh, we're going to start a 2D sketch actually we already started the sketch, that's how we got to this point point. Um, 
and I'm going to start a rectangle because we're going to basically make the bottom piece. So the the overall dimensions of the chassis, we're going to start here. So all we start at zero zero for this one. It's going to save headaches down the line. Uh, we know that this is 23.75. Just using my SSS as an example here, and then for the depth, it's 8.05 inches. So hopefully it pops up here. Yep. And that you'll notice some constraints and such. Um, we're good here. So we're going to finish that sketch. And if you want to orient yourself, um, always hit that home button as kind of home base. Whoops. All right. Uh, sort of looks like a chassis at this point. We're going to hit the face button. And then the face is going to automatically do the thicknesses that we did in the when we activated the sheet metal default. So as you see here, follow the default to 0 0.08. Um, profile is already kind of selected. It looks like it's coming up, which is good. We're going to go ahead and hit OK. Ah, it looks like a flat piece of sheet metal. And that's exactly what we have here, is a flat piece of sheet metal. Um, next thing we want to do is add a flange. This flange is how you get the bends to come up the front and the, and the side. So we know that the, the height of this chassis is going to be uh, 2.5 inches. So we're just going to be 2.5. Come on. It's a little slow. And then once we start going over, let's see. No. Maybe I have to type in. It's going to cancel it for a second. Yep, 2.5. All right. I'm going to select the edge. And then automatically it's going to make that uh, flange for us. So I'm going to do one flange at a time. And they'll become important later on because um, that flange is going to dictate where we put the holes. And it's just a lot easier to manage that one by one. So I'm going to select this back corner, zoom in a little bit. And we're going to add another flange to the back. So this is establishing our height. So we're OK and OK. We're going to add an, another flange. Uh, this time it's going to be a little shorter. Um, I like 0.75. Some people, you don't really need it that deep in. Um, you'll see in a second what I'm talking about. Some folks, um, I don't know what Dumble uses. I'm pretty sure it's a 0.75. Uh, but you can get away with 0 0.5, 0 0.75 whatever you think. Um, I don't know why this is, maybe that's a bug. But so now I'm going to select the inside flange and you see kind of where this is going. Go back to there, flange, inside flange. All right, very cool. So now we have about 90% of the chassis layout uh, good to go. Looking pretty good, looking pretty good. If you notice, or something looks a little off about the visuals on this, it's because we're in orthographic mode. Um, perspective is more or less like what this would look like in real life. But orthographic is, is good um, in, a, in a second, you'll see. Because when you go to the top, you notice that, see how these kind of stick out like that? Um, it, it can be a little confusing. So orthographic makes it nice and square. It kind of mimics reality. Um, to make things line up as you sort of would expect um, and that's useful in chassis layout. We're going to start a 2D sketch and then it's going to ask you what plane. Uh, so we're going to select that. Um, this sketch is called sketch 6. We're going to go in AutoCAD, select our layout again. It's going to probably place it somewhere weird. And go ahead. So we're going to hit next. Finish. And it looks like it's going to put it on top of everything, which is fine for now. And then we're going to move this down. So we're going to go, not type move, but we're going to select the base point. It's going to be this bottom corner. And we're going to drag it all the way down to 0 and 0. So 0, 0. Good to go. Um, yep, and then done. 
finish the sketch. And now, let's see if cut works. So we're going to select this. Uh, shape. Nope, it's not. What is going on? Select profile. Oh, okay. All right, now let's see. Cross our fingers. We have holes. All right, so the problem I had was I needed to start a new sketch and not just piggyback off of the sketch for the um, face. So that's what that was. So to edit more cuts and holes, I'm going to go back and hit profile. Do that a few more times. You notice that when I select, okay, so I'm going to get OK, but like that big, huge piece did not cut. And that's likely why. Well, let's show you. Profile. You see how it's not gray like these are? Um, that's because the circle is not complete. So we're going to go here to sketch and run the sketch doctor. So remember that sketch doctor I talked about earlier? Hopefully I edited it out. We're going to diagnose and look for redundancies and such. So do I want to run it? Yes. So I'm going to hold down my keyboard until it runs through what I think is going to be everything. Come on. OK. We'll see what happens now. So now we're going to finish. Let's edit our sketch again. Oh, yeah. Look at that. So now we have some more things to select. Whoops. One too many. I'm going to cancel out of that. So you're going to basically have to go back and forth a bunch of times. Um, the same thing happens on the front of the flanges. So um, I'm sure that there's a more efficient way of doing this. Here, I'll just finish this one cut. Whoops. Profile. Select this profile. You'll notice that the... Um, well, let's actually, let's see. Top. What did it cut? See how it only did that one triangle? So I'm going to have to do this sort of approach. Hit OK. And voila. We have that cut. Um, and then you can start seeing that. But for the face in the back, I'm going to just quickly go through. Um, we're going to uh, cut that way, but we need to start a 2D sketch first. So here's the front. Starting a new sketch. Same sort of workflow. We're going to import the chassis layout. Okay. It's going to take a bit to load. Next. Finish. And uh, is this the front or the back? Okay, so I need to add the front. So we're going to get rid of all this. We're going to move this, so highlight from the up, uh, lower right to upper left, hit move, precise input. I'm going to do the top, and we're just going to overlay to the very top of this chassis. So since in AutoCAD we de or defined our chassis size is the same as this, 2.5 inches, um, you see that those line up perfectly. So we're going to go ahead and hit OK. Uh, Oh, we're in the back, so now we're going to select that corner. And let's start cutting away. All right, so you see that the squares didn't take for some reason, but the circles did. So it's a lot of this back and forth. Um, and hit OK. To resolve that, here, let's see. We'll go into the sketch. OK. And... We can either start a new triangle or we can run this, the doctor to see if it um, catches that. Sketch doctor, diagnose, sketch, okay, yep. Sure, let's combine all of them. So I'm going to hold down my enter key again. Okay, hit okay. Let's see if, this, if that fixed it. Oh, it did. Okay. Kind of happy that that worked out. So now we can start adding those holes like you see. Alright, so we're that's the kind of the quick and dirty of it. 
Um, once we get into the decals part, uh, that's going to be at the end. So I haven't done the decal uh, portion yet, but you can use the same sketch or you can make a new sketch and basically import an image. So this is a little bit jumping ahead, but we have uh, some silkscreen artwork that are in PNG format. Since this is the front, I'm going to add the faceplate and all the uh, portions are the same. The, the only difference is that I made my silkscreen for um, a different bend radius so that it's going to look a little bit off. And it looks like it's 180 degrees flipped, so I needed to flip it actually. Um, but you can do that in your drawing. Uh, flipping the, it may break the cut, so let's just finish the sketch. Uh, we're gonna, I think, let's, can we delete the feature? So let's not delete the consumed sketches. All right, let's try this. And I'm gonna rotate center point. Um, I'm gonna just do this as a center point. Uh, sure. Hopefully that doesn't cause any issues. Oh, my decal. Okay, we're gonna hit done. Let's see if we can just delete the decal. Yep, okay. All right, now we're gonna move base point. We'll just do that lower left. Or lower right, sorry. Done. All right, now it should look a little bit better. Uh, we're going to add our image. So SSS faceplate. And that should overlay really nicely. Um, well, if the bends were the same. See, it's pretty close. Uh, what I meant by the bends, the each bend radius, and here's kind of like the metal physics of it all. The bend radius of aluminum should be the thickness, basically. That's your radius. So our radius, our thickness is 0.08. So our thickness, uh, our bend ra radius is 0.08 as well. Um, how can I prove this? Well, we're going to go here and annotate. So under environments, I believe, or is it view? Annotate, actually, how about it's on annotate. We're gonna measure, we're gonna measure this, and then look at that as 0.08, all right? Um, and for silk screening artwork, uh, to be really nice to your, to your silk screener, what you can do is annotate, so here we go, but we're gonna take uh, where we see the flat areas, so we're gonna take that, and this, and we're gonna measure out, and that is 2.18 inches. So check that out. Um, when you create your silk screen, which we'll get to in a later tutorial, um, that number is very important because that is the flat surface that you're going to be measure, uh, using your uh, as your guide for your artwork. Uh, the artwork that I have here that I overlaid badly is for uh, the uh, one eighth inch thickness. Um, that thickness isn't always required. You could probably get away with a little thinner if you want. It's a little cheaper to manufacture, but it's not as as rigid as the one eighth. All right. So what else can we show you here? Um, oh, when you're going to do a cut now with and this is a poor example because it doesn't line up perfectly. But we'll go back to our sheet metal. We're going to do a cut. We're going to select the profile, and then we're going to uh, oops, make a hole, and then we'll make another hole here. And you can kind of see where this is going. Uh, to make that decal visible again, just go into your sketch and make your sketch visible. Uh, do, 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 change the visibility, and then that will sort of show that. What's also kind of nice is when you hire your silk screener, they always appreciate um, because the artwork for the silk screen needs to be precise and they typically like guide holes so it's going to be a piece of um, your your artwork that's going to be slightly smaller than one of the holes on the sides okay 
So what they're going to do is that when they line up the chassis to be silk screened, they're going to want two endpoints. So likely where this indicator lamp is, um, this artwork circle will should be fit right in here, but in a smaller diameter. So the um, uh, basically the ink or enamel, whatever kind of paint they're using, won't get on your chassis, but it will be in here um, for a guide for them. So they make the silk screen nice and straight. So that's kind of cool. Uh, to get the sides, now this is kind of a little interesting. Um, we're going to do a sketch, and it's going to be on this plane. So we're going to start a new 2D sketch, and we're going to start here. Uh, it doesn't have to be too precise, but we're going to basically make a bunch of lines and arcs for this. And we're going to follow the guidance here. I know I'm leaning in. Uh, we might need to change constraints and such. Okay, so we have that. Do another line. I'm sure there's an easier, more efficient way of doing this, but we're going to trace the inside here. Okay, we're gonna trace that. Another line. This is kind of painful, so I apologize. It's slow, but this is very important because uh, then you'll see how the sides are going to be constructed. Uh, we're going to do a line here and there. Let's see if I can just go up. Yep, I can do that. So let's go here, and then we're going to go all the way across. Down. Over. Okay. Now we're going to do an arc to connect the two. So there to there. And then we're just going to have this uh, arc touch there and we're basically going to create the verticals by doing this there to there okay is it done yeah uh, hopefully and all these files are available on my github for you to use we're going to select that. Okay, now in theory, I think that should create a closed loop. I'm going to guess that it's going to give me a hard time. So let's do sketch doctor, diagnose sketch. Yeah, there's redundant points, combined sketch points. Okay, now we're going to finish it. Uh, what we're going to do with that drawing, though, is we're going to export it. So we're ultimately going to make a part with it but we're going to export the sketch for now um, and pretend like I just saved it, okay? And we're going to go up here, new, new sheet metal, okay? Uh, create, uh, start a 2D sketch, since they're vertical, I'm going to select on this plane because it's going to be right in this, uh, the two sides. We're gonna hit AutoCAD. Uh, AutoCAD design. Oh, that's just the chassis now. Yeah. Okay, I don't think I have it uh, in here. But basically, we're looking for the sides. So let me see if I have a drawing of the sides somewhere available. Um, uh, what we're going to do, same thing that we did before, but we're going to import um, the sides. So maybe I will go back to the other drawing and export this. So we have this sketch going to export object, or we can try to make a part. Let's try to make a first. No. We're going to export the sketch. Export sketch as, and I'll just save it to my desktop this time. As sides, there's a few sides. <laughs> uh, AutoCAD DXF. We're going to do DWG sides. Dot DWG. Now we're going to start that new part. 
okay. AutoCAD uh, desktop sides.dwg and hopefully the drawing will import. Yep, okay. So next, finish, sure. All right, this doesn't quite look right, so we're gonna rotate. Select the center point. Um, I'm gonna just select that right there. Awesome. And you can tell that there's some things missing and here we're not done right, so I'm just gonna, oops, get out of this and then finish up the sketch. Let's go here, delete that extra bit. Um, this arc from here to here, uh, actually we're gonna go out a bit. See it now, I think because our sketch was not right, Sure, let's just use this for now, but please double check your sketch. Um, all right, I just close that. Now what happens is that we finish the sketch, and now we want to make a face of it. So one open loop found, great. It's going to do sketch doctor again. Uh, yes, yes, yes. I'm going to hold down that button. All right, let's see if we're ready to do a face. Nope, it's not going to let me. Ah. Well, hopefully you get the idea. We're just going to make this face and then it's going to extrude out. Let's try this one more time. Actually, that's a good thing if it highlighted everything. This is very time consuming. I don't mean to make this video long to intimidate you. Um, it's really here to help you, hopefully. Some constraints, overlapping. It's highlighting the problem for me. Where's the problem? We are in sketch. So let's figure this out. Is it this thing down here? Let's delete that. Okay, I'm not actually quite sure why this is failing. Um, so what I'm going to do is hopefully figure this out quick, or we need to just retrace the other one. I swore I had some sides. Main chassis dot sides. Sides flat. That's what it was called. All right, let's try that for temporary. Sides flat. Start two D sketch. Actually, we have this. We're gonna go into. Documents, get 3D AutoCAD, AutoCAD. That's why I couldn't find it before. Okay, sides flat. Next. 
finish. All right, finish sketch. It's going to be vertical, but I just want to show you how the ex how the face is created. It's going to give me problems again. This is very common, by the way, from folks I talk to. All right, oh, there it is. Okay, so finally, <laughs> we get a sides. It's obviously that doesn't look right, but this is a crash course again. So we are crashing hard. I am crashing hard on this. Um, all right, we are at 26% battery, so we should hurry this up. All right for combining so now we have two parts so make sure you save that that's your sides and now we have uh, the chassis or at least the attempt of a beginning of a chassis now you want to combine them together no uh, you want to create a part or a assembly so we're going to hit new create a standard I I A M, and this is where we are going to place uh, Place content. Nope, that's not it. I know this way works, so I'm going to do this way. I'm going to take our two files. So we have our 3D CAD design, we have our uh, IPT. So we have our two IPTs. We have our main chassis.ipt. Uh, hopefully, this works like I think it will. Yep, and then we got our sides.ipt. So I'm going to drag that in there too. So I'm going to, I hope, I don't, I know that there's a better way to do this, but I'm going to just drag this to a way and then I'm going to change my environment or my view to be uh, hidden edges view. Okay. So I'm trying to get these to line up vertically. Okay, looks good. And then I'm going to, you see how it's like up in space? I'm going to bring it down. So I'm going to very carefully now bring this part down. And now you hopefully see what I'm going for. All right, we're gonna hit the home button and that's it on the edge. But we want to bring it in because those uh, points in the back are going to be where the um, chassis bolts come through. So I'm going to go back to home and check that out. I'm going to go this side, and it's starting to look like a real chassis. So very cool things in this. Um, I hope you found it useful. I think that's about everything I can show you for now. Oh. Actually, there's one more part, so I'm going to go back to, because uh, we have the cool, you know, this is how it's all folded together, um, but how do you, how does the uh, assembly, or how does a metal fabrication shop know how to um, cut along the lines once this is a flat piece of metal? Uh, that's quite simple. We're going to open the uh, main chassis here. And so once we have the main chassis done, we're going to go to flat pattern. And then that this is what they're going to use to uh, figure out the bends and all that fun stuff. Because uh, you can see right here's the midpoint for the bend, and here's the basically this, the radius dictates that sort of thing when they put it on the brake press. Um, yeah, so that's what they're going to use. And plus it's kind of cool to see what it looks like up and around. So hopefully you found this useful. Um, big update on my end is I have this chassis actually in the fabrication process right now. Um, I'm going to make 10 of them and sell a few of them. So uh, some folks have already chimed in and said that they're interested. And what the basically the end product is going to be the folded. It's going to be sandblasted. It's going to be powder coated. It's going to be silk screened. So basically everything you see in this assembly is how uh, m you know minus the boards but I'm gonna do all that open source as well so I'm gonna give you every single step um, but the big part investment wise is the chassis itself 
So hit me up with a DM, go to my website, uh, thetonegeek.com, and um, please reach out if you're interested. Right now I'm targeting $350 per chassis, and that's a steal because um, having these fabricated for a one-off, uh, you're lucky to even find a fabrication shop that will do that. Um, a lot of the hobbyists, they, they kind of don't really deal with hobbyists that often, but I luckily found someone that was very accommodating and wanted to help out uh, the channel and um, thought that the project was pretty cool. So I have 10 of them being made right now, and soon we'll be powder coating, and I'll show you all that process. So stick around and subscribe if you like this video. Um, obviously give it a thumbs up and let me know what I can do better next time. Sorry if I was rambling on and on, but uh, this is a hard one. This is a really hard thing to do. Um, it took me about six months to learn how to do this somewhat efficiently, and I'm still a student at it. So uh, enjoy.